Hi everyone. So before I begin reading chapter one, I'm just going to give you a heads up and this is a disclaimer for the other chapters and parts. I know that the previous video was a little bit lengthy. I didn't mean for it to be. So what I'm going to do is there are different, I guess, sub chapters within each chapter that I'm going to separate. So it's like, for example, part one, as um, Mr. Connor explained in the introduction, is like one part and then it's going to be three chapters. Okay, and I think that's how he structured the rest of the book for the other parts. So in one chapter, there are little sub parts. I'm going to split each of those up into its own video. Okay, so this is going to be the disclaimer and we will get into part one of Blossom of Bone, which is bone. Okay. All right, so let us begin. Give me one second. <clears throat> Part 1. Bone. I am sitting under a mesquite tree in the burning Texas noon, posing for a photograph at the ruins of Mission San Francisco de la Espada in San Antonio. From where I sit, I can see the descendants of those who once lived here. They are working in their gardens, washing their cars, playing with their children. While the church has been rebuilt and a new statue of St. Francis holding a sword has been replaced, oh, has replaced the old one, little remains of the village that once occupied this site. A few mountain laurel trees with their fragrant purple flowers reminiscent of wisteria and red beans whisper of ritual dances that once took place here, long before the Christmas carnivals, before the blankets dipped in smallpox, before the rain stopped and the earth cracked. Samin, the people called the, rain, the red beans. That is what the people called the red beans. The Spanish named them frijolilos, the deer had known their magic, had danced beneath their spell. The people had found the beans in their bellies. They honored the deer's spirit, Tamox, whom the Huicos called Kau Yumai, with great dances, Tikse, which mimed the movements of the deer. The Tikse were held outside on late summer evenings and in the Tiopas, the sacred dwellings when the winter rains fell. The shaman, the Kutatse, who wore antlers, led them. Among the dancers were those dressed in the garments of women, those who loved the other men of the village. Perhaps the Kutatse himself was such a man. Those who dared drink of the brew of piote, herbs, and roasted powdered red beans. They painted their faces red like the, like the beans, wore necklaces made of them. The beans had eyes, they said. The beans would allow them to see into the future. I'm gonna reread that last sentence. I think it was how he worded it, no offense. Those who dared, drank of the brew of piote, herbs, and roasted powdered red beans. Some played instruments, drums, rattles, bone flutes, while others danced. The dancers carried spears and stalks adorned with feathers. They whipped themselves with the ver vertebrae of snakes. They vomited as they danced cleansing themselves of transgressions. The rose of dawn found them sleeping beside the smoldering fire, slowly returning from the meadow of the deer. The priest of La Espada 
entered the small, dark room in which a single candle flickered. Anuwa Apjam, moon dweller, sat trembling in silence as the pale, wrinkled man opened the book of death. The manual para administrar los santos sacramentos de penitencia, composed by Father Bartolome Garcia, especially for his people, the Coahuiltecas, the people of the serpent, of the place now called San Antonio. So wise was Father Garcia that he had learned the language of the people, learned of tamoks and the deer and the little red beans, learned so that he might save the people's souls, watch their spirits rising from the flames. Pahe, Chem, Mama Iham, Ame. Samin, Chem, Mama Iham, Ame. Tije, Mamija, Yam, E. Yes, I say, I have taken Pakse, Piot, have eaten the Samin, the little red beans, have danced the dance of the deer. You know I have done these things. You have watched me. Have you not done them yourself? I want to ask him, but I do not. Jagu bil ti an jak a u mame. Yes, I would say. If I were to answer you honestly, I have always been drawn to men, but I do not, cannot trust you. Jat a jako ap chika jagu pita poyo. Sajpam, pin apsak, oj mahoi, salate, sukyo, pammo, pamox, axte, aksako. I think ten years I have been with my lover, but I do not answer. Jagu tapo, japa jam, tauk, taku et. Pita pam moyo, micham ame. Where else would he live, I wonder. Of course he lives with me, but I will not tell you. Jagu pil tan atil, tuku em mami pi yame. I cannot believe you are asking me these questions. These things are between my jabachi and myself, and yet I know I must answer. No, I lie. I have never made love to him by entering him while lying on top of him. It is not hard to guess what your next question will be. Jagu pi dan jatil tuquet mamik pi yame. What does it matter what I say? I have been brought before you. Tamox has deserted me. My hands and feet are bound. I wear a crown of iron thorns. I know I am to die. I know that whatever I say, you have used me to bring him to the fire. Anuwa Apjam and his people of the serpent are gone as the grim father is gone. Their spirits live on, however in the priest who says mass here each Sunday, in the mountain laurels growing in this place as they grow on Mount Bonnell in Austin, in the children living in the vicinity of Espada who play games with the little red beans, in the botanicas and the hierberias where the beans now called Colorines are sold for good luck. In the spiritual practices of Rafael, a gay Mexicano, a Native American student of mine, whose family has decided to return to the old ways. In the necklace my friend Hyperion wears when he dances on enchanted rock. In the bones beneath the ruins. <laughs>